Hey guys, so in this video I'm going to be talking about how I installed the third EG4 Power Pro wall mount battery, the outdoor version. And if you guys missed the first video where I installed the, the first two of these here, then I'll tag that above and I'll put it in the description also. But yeah, I'm just going to go into how I wired this third one in, and it shouldn't be too long of a video. Anyway, before I get started, I'll go quickly over the specs. These are 48 volt, 280 amp hour wall mount batteries. So that should be around 14.3 kilowatt hours. They're outdoor rated. They have a 200 amp charge and discharge rating. They also have a 10 year warranty and they are rapid shutdown capable. So with a push of a button, you can actually shut the batteries off completely. All right, so I'll jump into the install. Like I said, I'll show you some of the steps I took to get this last battery in here. All right, so I finally got my third PowerPro outdoor wall mount battery. And these are so much wider, or at least appearance wise, so much wider than the indoor model. I haven't measured it yet, but it's probably four or five inches, something like that thinner. Maybe three. I'll have to take a look. And I'm not even going to bother taking this inside. What I'm going to do is I have these cables already made up to hook into a 6000 XP from a pro battery. So I'm going to hook these in. I'm going to lean that up, hook these in here to the battery and then charge it up with this 18 amp charger. The 48 volt uh, EG4 18 amp charger they have. This is actually waterproof too. So I'm going to charge this up to 100% and that way I can introduce it into the pack without any issues. I could charge it from solar, switch the other ones off, but that's a lot of extra hassle. So while I'm getting everything ready, I'm going to have this charging. Right now I'm taking the side grates off to be able to get access to the Amphenol connection right there so I can hook the wires in. I'm super excited about having this battery to expand my storage. I just couldn't afford one till now. I'll hook the positive in right here and the negative over on this side. Uh, turn the BMS on. So because this is a 18 amp charger, it's going to take a bit. But like I said, I've got other things I can be doing now. There we go. You can probably see there, but it's charging. Shows the red flashing light. So that will probably be, I don't know, I could calculate it up as far as amp hours and if you're charging at 18 amps, but it's going to be quite a while. But I'll show you guys here. If you missed the last video where I did the install, I'll show you where I'm going to be putting so it's going to go right here. I left a slot for that third battery. I've got Unistrut right there. And what I did on the last ones was I bolted that back plate on there and then just set the battery down on. But it's basically resting on the slab anyway. And that's the charger for my Ego lawnmower. I need to do a little short review on that for people that are into battery powered lawn equipment. Really been liking this thing so far. Yeah, I, it, I cut the grass with it twice a week or so. I abuse it really. Actually, you can probably see it's kind of filthy, but yeah, it's doing pretty good so far. Look at this little guy. We've got a million little dinosaurs out here now, <laughs> little lizards, but we like them. They eat up all our bugs. Yeah, there's a ton of them now. Look at that. He's okay with me petting him, almost. So I'm gonna add the back plate now. I took it off of the battery. So I'm just going to set it on the Unistrut here, bolt it in, and after it's fully charged, or maybe even in between, I might lift it up here and set it on, and I can always set the charger over here too.
I explained on my last video how I could have drilled these out a little bit to, because I can't move the unistrut down because of this on the metal siding. But I could have drilled these out a little bit up top and been able to put some more bolts in. But yeah, I'm not really concerned about it. This unistrut and the way it's bolted here is basically just to keep them steady or a for what it's worth type of thing. They're not going to need anything. They're sitting on this slab. They'll never have an issue. My goodness, that, I love it. Now that I've got it in place, I can plug the charger back in and get it charged the rest of the way up. So they sell a parallel kit at Signature Solar for these Power Pro batteries, but I figured I might make my own. Uh, this is really all I needed, but the kit, if you buy these heads with it, the Amphenol heads, that actually comes with this connector also, which I don't need. But maybe if they didn't sell these with it, it would be cheaper. I'd rather just them offer these heads in case people want to do like I'm doing here and just make their own parallel kit. Anyway, these are the heads that come on the cables that come with it. And I'm going to have an extra set because when you parallel, you just one, run one um, cable each, a positive and negative to the battery. So this is what it's going to look like here. And you just crimp this fitting on to the cable. So that's the end that's already there, and I will now crimp these on to the other one. It's very fine stranded wire, so a hose clamp or a zip tie can help bind those fine threads in so you can get the head on to crimp it. There we go. Not bad. So then once we slide the cover back over, we'll be able to do the negative. I actually like these fittings. This is actually really nice. It makes for a clean connection when you do it. Although, if you guys saw the last crimp there, I'm wondering if, like I saw Dexter say on the solar forum that these wires, or maybe it was a video I think he did on that new midnight solar inverter, that these wires I think are three gauge, three odd. So that might explain why it looks so squished on that last crimp. Because the die I'm using here is for a two odd cable. So, yeah, that might be why it squished a little bit of the innards out of it. Looks very professional. So, yeah, if you guys want to save yourselves a little money, if you have one of these crimpers, if you don't, I can, because you don't want to use a hammer crimper or something like that on this, so I can put a link to this in the description. But, yeah, if you want to save yourself some money, the batteries come, if you already have batteries hooked up to your inverter, and you're just wanting to add one or two more Power Pro batteries onto it. They already come with communication, they come with the cables, they just don't come with these. So you can buy a parallel kit, make it easier on yourself, or you can make your own. So this is where I'm at currently. I've got the conduit in between the boxes. The batteries are very close to each other on voltage, so it should be good with that. As soon as I get these wires hooked up, and I've got to do communication. That's one of the last things I've got to do. So I've got to put the comms cable to the master battery over there, and then I've got to set the dip switch here. And we should be nearly ready to turn it on. So we've got 30 amps discharging, so it was just a little out of, out of balance from the other batteries. But should only take a minute or two, and they'll balance out. And then when I, they fully charge, which probably won't be today or tomorrow because it's going to be raining all day tomorrow. But when they fully charge, everything will be balanced. All right, well, I've just got to button things up now. Put these grates back on. I got to tighten this back up here that goes over the dip switches and put these on here to make everything waterproof. And we should be good to go. I checked the monitor site and this battery hasn't showed up yet, but sometimes it'll take 
five, ten minutes to show up on the monitor site once you've changed things. That's why I wasn't communicating on, I was looking at the LL manual, but the pro battery, it shows two down, four up. So now it's showing up on the monitor site and the app. Oh man, that looks sharp. I love it. So yeah, it was worth the work. That is a lot of extra capacity now. That's what I wanted out here. And I want a few more indoor models on the inside. But in the meantime, yeah, this looks great. And it wasn't bad, really. I mean, the, the hardest part is just getting it on the wall. After that, it's pretty easy to do all the rest of the wiring. So yeah, I think it looks great. It adds a lot more storage to my system. And again, it wasn't very hard to put in. And that's one of the things I love about these systems is you can add it as you go, as you can afford it. And uh, that's what I did here. Even though I wanted all three at once, I just couldn't afford it. So I waited until I could purchase that last battery. So if you have a smaller system and you just needed two rack batteries to get things going, like say for instance, you had a 3000 watt inverter or the 6000 XP, and all you can afford at the moment is two rack batteries, then get what you can afford. But my biggest advice would be to plan for the future. So I did plan to do this. So plan to expand one way or another, whether you need to get a six slot cabinet and instead of a three slot, maybe expand into that six batteries in the future. Or if you think you're only going to need those three batteries, then yeah, definitely do that. But yeah, plan for expansion, whether it be running some extra wire somewhere or getting something prepped for the future. One thing I did want to mention with the install here the parallel cables were a bit longer than the cables that come with these batteries. So I spaced these out at around 10 inches apart. The manual did state around 12 inches is better to be able to see behind. And I think it even, I think they allow for a little less for code now. But uh, yeah, I'm right at 10 inches here. And those cables that came with the Power Pro that I crimped the heads on, it was just long enough. But with the parallel kit that I got for these here, I had plenty of room, so it must be around, I didn't measure it, but it must be around eight inches to a foot longer on those cables. So if you're gonna make your own like I did, you don't wanna go any uh, further apart than 10 inches, maybe even a smidge less if you're gonna be doing that. The measurement was so exact, you'd have figured I planned it that way, but I did not. I would have been pretty disappointed if that didn't fit, <laughs> or I would have been pretty mad, but. No, it ended up fitting like just right, but I didn't have much more. I probably had one more inch of slack or so. So yeah, definitely keep that in mind when you're spacing your batteries out if you do the same. It's sunny out now, but it rained a lot of the midday there, so I never got to charge everything fully, but my batteries are at like 94%, something like that right now, and everything's working perfect with the new battery. I would highly recommend these or the indoor models if you're planning on adding some storage or starting from scratch. And as I'm filming this, it's the month of August, and Current Connected is a distributor of EG4, and they have a free shipping offer if you put a code in. So I'll put my code down below too. If you guys need anything, uh, now would be a good time as far as for shipping. So even if you're just adding one rack battery, that can get pretty pricey. So yeah, take advantage of that code if you guys want to. Anyway, I appreciate you guys watching. This was a really fun project. I liked doing the first two, and adding the third was fun also. It's probably because I have plenty of space here and I've prepped everything beforehand. A lot of times I'm in a rush and I'm trying not to be anymore, but yeah, a lot of times I'm in a rush or in a tight area there and I'm sweating and getting frustrated. But no, here it was, everything was laid out really nice and pretty simple. So yeah, thanks for watching guys. I've got a lot of stuff coming up. I've actually got a new array I'm gonna be installing in some of the upcoming videos and I'm testing out some new products also. So I'll see you guys soon, thanks. You're going to need to move. You're going to need to move. Come on. Go on, please. Thank you. Thank you so much. No, no, no. You got to stay. You're going to stay out of the frame. <laughs>